Okay, perfect. That means we will start with this uh, detection efficiency. And as I said, it is ratio between number of detected particles and number of particles which are emitted by source. Uh, this is uh, absolute efficiency and uh, it uh, consists of two uh, efficiencies, independent efficiencies. One is intrinsic efficiency and uh, second is uh, geometrical efficiency, acceptance. Yeah? What is acceptance? What is geometrical efficiency? This is ratio between particles which are running in the direction of sensitive volume of uh, detector uh, and number of particles which are emitted by source. And intrinsic efficiency is ratio of detected particles and particles which are running from source to the direction of uh, sensitive volume of detector. Uh, as I said, there are two independent uh, uh, efficiency. That means uh, this uh, absolute efficiency, this, uh, it's possible to obtain uh, as multiplying of intrinsic efficiency and uh, this geometrical uh, efficiency acceptance. Yeah? Uh, usually, uh, this efficiency is given for detector, if you have some manual, for some standard lines. Uh, the standard lines are uh, or uh, this cobalt 60 line uh, for energy 1,332 uh, uh, kV uh, or for example for cesium 137 and uh, uh, very often it is uh, determined also relatively. And uh, this uh, efficiency is compar compared uh, to standard, uh, some standard efficiency of standard detector. In this case, the standard detector is natrium iodide uh, with sizes which are uh, given by this uh, American units, but for this SI, it is uh, 7.6 uh, centimeters time, 70.6 centimeters. And in given geometry, this is uh, for uh, distance of uh, of source uh, from detector about 25 centimeters. And uh, this efficiency, absolute efficiency uh, for uh, such detector for such nitrile is 0.12 uh, uh, percent. Uh, okay. Uh, also for. Uh, Quality of detector is the important ratio between peak and Compton background. That means if you will have uh, high energy uh, gamma line with high intensity and with high, that means also high Compton background, it you will lose uh, some uh, weak peaks which will be with uh, lower energy. That means. Uh, it is uh, if this ratio between peak and Compton background will be higher and higher, it will be better and better for uh, detection and for uh, analysis uh, of this uh, weak peaks on the uh, background of, uh, of high energy peaks. Uh, again, uh, usually uh, in this uh, detector manuals, uh, this uh, ratio uh, is given uh, for peak uh, co cobalt peak uh, 1332 kV and uh, this is ratio uh, between uh, this peak and uh, Compton background in the region uh, of 1040 and uh, up to 1096 kV. Yeah, that means ratio between how looks uh, maximum of peak uh, and uh, this uh, Compton background in this in this region for for this line. Uh, okay, for uh, energy measurements of uh, to that uh, determination of uh, energy of uh, lines, it's uh, important to have uh, to know energy resolution of detector. Uh, that means this is smallest distinguishable energy difference uh, between two near energies. Uh, if you have monoenergetic beam, yeah, 
and uh, ideally it is a delta function. Uh, practically, you will obtain in any detector uh, finite width. Uh, mostly, as I said, it is uh, some Gaussian shape, Gaussian function. Uh, resolution is uh, presented uh, in the form of full width at half maximum. Yeah, here. That means uh, it will be this is this. Uh, and OK, that uh, it is sometimes it's uh, fine to show uh, in the form uh, of relative resolution. This is a ratio between this uh, full width uh, at half maximum to uh, whole uh, energy of this peak. And uh, in this case, it will be in percent. And uh, OK, as I said, uh, if a detector is uh, best, uh, it will be nearer, uh, the nearest to uh, this Gaussian shape. Yeah? And uh, that means that uh, sometimes it's uh, fine to uh, look uh, how it looks like uh, this uh, full width at half maximum for uh, Gaussian and how it looks also width in one tenth of high, uh, how it looks like uh, width in 150 uh, of uh, of high uh, and uh, if uh, you have a Gaussian peak this ratio between this uh, should be 1.82 for Gaussian and uh, 2.38 yeah. uh, okay there are also possible to have uh, other distributions we already discussed this uh, Lorentz shape and uh, in any time, uh, usually you have also some asymmetries uh, from this uh, Gaussian uh, peak. Uh, here, how it looks like this uh, energy resolution. Uh, and uh, it is uh, next uh, part will be valid for scintillation, semiconductor and gas detectors. Yeah. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, it's important for resolution a number of created uh, this uh, carriers of, uh, of energy. That means uh, charge carriers uh, and uh, also photons if you have scintillation. Yeah? And uh, you will obtain number of this uh, which is given by energy of this photon of this uh, of this uh, particle and uh, num uh, energy which is necessary for production of one charge carrier or one photon yeah this is uh, mean energy which is needed for creation of of this yeah uh, okay if you have ionization the excitation and the things uh, you, you will have Poisson distribution. That means uh, this uh, sigma in this case, uh, it will be square root from number of this uh, produced carriers. Yeah? Uh, relation between full uh, width in uh, half maximum and sigma for Gauss shape, for Gaussian, is uh, given by this, it is 2.35 times this sigma. Yeah. This is for Gaussian peak. And as I said, usually for such type of detectors, you have this Gaussian peak. Uh, okay, detector absorbing only part of energy. That means uh, this uh, deposited energy freely fluctuate in this case, Poisson distribution is valid. Yeah. That means it's possible to calculate this energy resolution. That means this full width in half maximum. Uh, this is two times 0.35 times the sigma square root of n times this energy which is needed for production of this. Yeah. That means this. Uh, okay, this is possible to, 
to calculate by uh, knowledge of energy of our gamma and uh, needed energy for production of this photon or charge carrier, you will put here, yeah, and okay, that means this it's possible to sketch and you will obtain this. That means it's possible to cal calculate this energy resolution uh, from uh, energy uh, of this uh, photon and uh, energy which is needed for production of this uh, photon or uh, charge car. Uh, okay, uh, there are uh, one uh, influence uh, on it. Uh, this deposited energy is fixed by finite value. Yeah. Poisson is not fully valid and it is necessary to introduce some correction. And this correction was uh, was firstly obtained by uh, Physik Fano and this is named from this uh, time Fano correction. And uh, it is given here to, to calculation of the sigma. That means here, that means you will have here some uh, correction function which is uh, given by this uh, by this funnel. Uh, and for different detectors, this funnel correction is uh, different. That means it depends on type of detectors. Uh, relative energy resolution is uh, ratio between this uh, uh, full uh, width in half maximum divided by energy. And OK, we will put uh, this divided by energy. And uh, OK, that, that means uh, dependency of relative energy resolution is as one divided by square root of energy. Yeah, that this is this this function, and uh, it is it is possible to see that relative uh, energy resolution increase uh, with uh, with uh, with this energy. That means it will be smaller but resolution which will be will be better yeah value will be smaller but uh, resolution will be better uh, okay here is possible to see how it looks like this is this uh, energy here is this uh, resolution uh, this is this uh, relative resolution and here is possible to see that this is for semiconductor and this is uh, for scintillator yeah. Here is semiconductor germanium, and uh, this is uh, this is for uh, for a scintillator. Uh, okay, uh, this uh, uh, this resolution is influenced also by another factors because it's possible to have some absorption of charge carriers, photons, properties of electronics, and all these things. Uh, that means uh, if uh, in the case in which uh, these contributions are independent, uh, this, it is possible to use uh, this uh, equation or uh, this uh, uh, this type of work for uh, obtaining this resolution. Uh, we have not only energy resolution, but there are also time resolution. Again, this is the smallest reserve, resolvable a time difference. Uh, this is definition similar as for energy, but this is for time. Again, it will be from this Gaussian peak, you will obtain this uh, full uh, wave in half maximum. Uh, space resolution, uh, this is the same for track detectors. Uh, it's possible uh, to discuss and uh, to, to, to measure uh, position and uh, you will have also uh, some uh, some resolution in in position, and uh, this definition is also uh, similar. But in this case, uh, it's possible to have uh, not only one coordinate, but but more coordinate, and you have uh, uh, Gaussian in space. Yeah, that means it is uh, two-dimensional Gaussian or three-dimensional Gaussian in this case. Uh, okay, what is also important to know and the next quantity is tolerance to radiation damages for detector. Uh, usually, very often, uh, you will use your detectors uh, in 
radiation field. And uh, in this case, it's necessary to know which detectors are uh, more safe uh, against this uh, radiation. Uh, okay, the, the worst situation is for a crystal, uh, because uh, you will obtain crystal at these defects and different bugs. Um, less sensitive are liquid or even gas detectors. In this case, you have no structure which is possible to destroy by irradiation. Yeah. More sensitive, that means there are these crystals, scintillation detectors, and <coughs> the worst situation is for semiconductor detectors. Here you have example. Here is uh, resolution or measured spectra for, <coughs> for semiconductor detector, germanium detector, and uh, here is situation after irradiation uh, long, uh, long work on uh, the <coughs> orbit, how it will look like for uh, <coughs> after long work uh, on the orbit. Uh, it is necessary to say that it is not uh, before, uh, before uh, starting work on uh, on uh, Earth orbit and hereafter, but it is after irradiation by uh, the same dose which is expected on on this orbit. But it's possible to see that uh, this is very very different situation. <laughs> that is, <coughs> uh, resolution is uh, much much worse, and also uh, this Gaussian is is uh, much worse shape. As well uh, sometimes it's possible to have some gradual regeneration. It's possible also regenerate this semiconductor detector uh, by warming, but sometimes it's not possible to obtain regeneration. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, now we will look on uh, different type of detectors. First, scintillation detectors. Uh, we have uh, scintillation detectors that uh, scintillator, uh, photomultiplier, and magnetic shielding. It's also possible to have photodiode. It's necessary to have something which is counting uh, uh, photons of light. Uh, if you have photomultiplier, it's necessary to have base also to, to work with this signal which is produced by this photomultiplier. Okay, uh, we have ionization, uh, we have excitation of atoms and molecules, and the excitation by light produced uh, light, luminescence, and uh, okay, we have uh, this light signal which is measured by photomultiplier or photodiode. You will obtain energy, you will obtain time. Uh, it's necessary to say that some types of uh, scintillation detectors are very fast in time. That means it's possible to use this, uh, these detectors of, as a uh, time detector and to obtain timing of particle detection. Uh, okay, and also uh, you saw uh, also that uh, we have some scintillation detectors which have uh, different uh, different uh, components of uh, the excitation of luminescence with uh, different uh, decay time. That means uh, you will obtain more. <coughs> complicated pulse shape. Uh, okay, that's it's necessary to, to say that we have two types of, we have fluorescency, this is fast energy conversion of light, 10 to the minus 8 seconds, and phosphorescency, which is delayed energy conversion of light, this is in microseconds, days, longer. Uh, this <coughs> mostly for 
uh, our detectors, uh, it's for scintillation detectors, it's necessary to use this fluorescency. Yeah? Here, this is the how it looks like, this photomultipliers, this is an example of some scintillation detectors, there are these photomultipliers, and here it is, this detectors. <coughs> Okay, this discharge has exponential behavior. Here you see uh, this uh, uh, discharge. Yeah, this is time here in microseconds, and you have uh, these two components. As I said, this uh, this is situation for this barium fluoride uh, detectors. For one component, it is this here. For binary component, it's it's here. For example, for this barium fluoride. You have fast component and so on. And there, uh, what we need uh, from scintillator, high efficiency of excitation energy conversion to fluorescent light. Conversion should be linear, that because we need to <coughs> to obtain information about energy. Uh, transparency for fluorescent light. Light emission should be in different range the light of absorption, yeah, because it will be absorbed, this fluorescent light, it will be not possible to use this scintillator. Fluorescent spectrum should be compatible with photomultipliers. Uh, it's possible also to use some uh, materials which convert this, uh, this spectrum, this uh, wavelength, to another wavelength which is better for photomultipliers sometimes. Uh, it is necessary to have short decay constant and uh, it should have uh, good optical properties and uh, it is necessary to be easily machinable. Uh, index of refraction should be near to uh, index of refraction of uh, glass uh, because it is necessary to have good crossing uh, of this light uh, from uh, the scintillator to photomultiplier. Yeah, <clears throat> we have uh, different types of uh, scintillators. There are organic scintillators, uh, organic crystals, uh, for example, anthracene, stillben, uh, liquid organic scintillators are very, very uh, nice and very important for uh, neutron uh, detection because they are uh, very uh, resistive uh, against uh, radiation damage. <clears throat> also, it's possible to use this liquid organic scintillators uh, for measurement of radioactive substances uh, which are given as part of detector. This is, uh, for example, uh, very important uh, for, uh, for detection of uh, radiocarbon-14. Uh, plastic scintillators, also organic scintillators, uh, they are very fast and uh, very often used for as uh, time of flight, uh, for time of flight detectors. Yeah? Here, for example, it is some example. It's uh, possible to see uh, that uh, this uh, leading edge uh, has uh, 0.2 uh, nanoseconds, that means 200 picoseconds, that means you will obtain accuracy which is in the order of uh, hundreds of picoseconds. Yeah? That's excellent. Uh, very low uh, Z, that means uh, atomic number of, of this material is very, very small. That means it is small uh, cross-section for photo effect. That means uh, also for Compton setting, uh, but uh, because for photo effect it is uh, very uh, very, uh, very, uh, very big dependency on, on the atomic number. Uh, it is Z in five. Yeah, uh, that uh, that means that uh, this uh, Compton scattering dominates, and uh, it's uh, you will obtain very small photo peak. And uh, it's possible to solve this situation that you will put to organic scintillators some heavy elements at mixture, for example, lead. Uh, but uh, that uh, will produce another problems that it will be some absorption of the light yeah, that 
it is not uh, not the best situation. Uh, much better for detection of gamma uh, is uh, usage of uh, inorganic uh, scintillators. Uh, they are usually slower, but not uh, not uh, in every case. Yeah, because for example. Uh, these uh, barium fluorides are from point of view of uh, detection and uh, timing are, are very, very nice, uh, very nice uh, scintillation detectors. Uh, okay, they have a higher uh, atomic number. Uh, for example, if you have uh, barium fluoride, barium is uh, heavier, and uh, we have also PB. Uh, WO4, uh, this is uh, lead, is uh, also very, uh, very, it is uh, from stable uh, isotopes, it is uh, the heaviest uh, which is possible to obtain. This, this is heaviest element which have uh, stable uh, isotope. Uh, that, that means that uh, from this reason, uh, it is more suitable for gamma radiation uh, usage of this uh, ionoarging uh, scintillators. Uh, there are, for example, cesium iodides, uh, natrium iodides, uh, BGO, uh, barium fluoride, and PBWO4. Uh, uh, that's uh, it's they are very useful for high energy gamma. Uh, this because they are. Uh, with very high uh, density and uh, also uh, with very high atomic numbers. As I said, this barium fluoride already I uh, you saw uh, that uh, it has uh, uh, two components and this fast component is very fast. Uh, it is in the range of uh, hundreds uh, picoseconds. That means the resolution is uh, time. Time resolution is uh, excellent. There are here uh, some uh, main features of uh, some examples of this uh, scintillators. Uh, Antracen uh, density. Uh, this is energy which is necessary to produce uh, on one uh, photon. Uh, and uh, this is this uh, time uh, resolution. Yeah. Uh, plastic here, yeah. this is this natrium iodide, here is this BGO and uh, barium fluoride. Uh, for scintillators, this FANO factor is one. Yeah. And uh, okay, that means that uh, if you know uh, this energy, yeah, it's possible uh, to calculate here, uh, this resolution, energy resolution. Yeah, and now here you have a dependency of this energy resolution on uh, energy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, here there are some examples of some uh, scintillator detectors. Uh, this is barium fluorides, and uh, this uh, you see. Uh, this PBWO4, uh, and uh, this is uh, possible to see that there are uh, different uh, light, different color, which is given uh, by uh, this uh, component of uh, of uh, photons which are uh, produced, uh, and uh, this is this uh, wavelength of this uh, of this photon of this electromagnetic. Uh, of light which is produced. Uh, okay, now we will go to semiconductor detectors. Uh, they are uh, very common, uh, high purity germanium, and uh, they need uh, liquid nitrogen for cooling. Uh, second type of the semiconductor detectors, uh, it is uh, silicon. Uh, usually they are used for low energy. Uh, photons. Uh, there are uh, more uh, type of the semiconductor detectors, and there are more special. Uh, there are uh, some uh, some new, uh, and again, it is uh, mostly for lower energy. Uh, for some of them, it's not necessary to have this cooling. Yeah, 
<coughs> this energy which is uh, necessary for production. In this case, it will be no photon, but uh, this is pair of uh, electron and hole. Uh, okay, you know how uh, the semiconductors are uh, working and uh, it's necessary to say that for this high purity germanium uh, detectors you have only 10 to the 9 impurities atoms uh, per uh, cubic uh, centimeter. Uh, okay, uh, why it is cooled to uh, nitrogen uh, temperatures? Yeah. Uh, it is approximately uh, 77 kelvins and uh, it's necessary to say that uh, this energy uh, you see here, this is energy which is necessary for production of a uh, pair of electron holes. And this energy is uh, relatively very small. That means if it is high temperature, uh, it will be even this chaotic movement of atoms. It's enough. Some part of this, this which is uh, this Maxwell distribution, which is going to a uh, higher part of this Maxwell distribution, is enough to produce this. That means uh, for high energies, uh, only by this chaotic movement of atoms, uh, which is given by temperature, uh, will produce this uh, electron hole pairs and uh, this uh, uh, detector in this uh, in this uh, case it will be uh, it will be destroyed yeah? if it will be high voltage on it it will be destroyed yeah? that means in in uh, in any case it will not work because it will be very big noise because you have electron hole pairs which are produced by this uh, temperature. This is the reason why it's necessary to have uh, smaller, uh, very low uh, temperature, about the 77 kelvins. Uh, here you see this basic uh, properties of semiconductor detectors. Yeah, this is this atomic number for. Silicon it is 14, for germanium it is 32. Here you have atomic mass. In any, in any case, you see that germanium is much better than uh, silicon for uh, cross sections of photo effect. There uh, also density is, uh, is, uh, is higher. Uh, atomic mass is also higher. That means uh, you, will, you will have much better situation. Here uh, there are this energy gap, uh, electron mobility, home mobility. Uh, this is uh, this velocity. It, it is necessary to say uh, this, uh, the, that this electron mobility and home mobility is different for different temperatures. And this is uh, this value for uh, this temperature 77 kelvins. Yeah? Uh, if you will, for example, work uh, with uh, uh, with semiconductor detectors, which are used for, for example, uh, the silicon detectors, which are used uh, for uh, room temperature, not uh, cooled. In this case, this uh, mobility will be completely different. Yeah? That's it's necessary to say. Uh, okay, here this is this uh, energy which is necessary for production of one uh, electron hole pair, and here you have this Fano effect. Fano coefficient. Yeah, this it's possible to say that it is very small, and uh, if uh, this Fano coefficient is small, that means it is uh, two or or one order smaller than uh, this uh, for uh, for uh, semiconduct uh, for scintillation detectors. That means uh, also this resolution will be better. Yeah. Um, uh, this voltage which is necessary to uh, to give on detector will be more than uh, 1000 volts. Uh, in any case, we will produce small pulses. Uh, it's necessary to have preamplifier. That means we will have detector, preamplifier, amplifier, uh, ADC. That means analog uh, digital converter, analyzer and computer. Yeah, that's okay. This is some example how it looks like this detector. 
Uh, okay, uh, now uh, some uh, parameters of this detector. Uh, here, relative efficiency to standard uh, natrium iodide. It is uh, 10 from 10 up to 70 percent. Yeah. Uh, peak to Compton is 1 to 30 or 1 to 60. Uh, resolution it is uh, here. Yeah, and uh, how it is uh, difference between uh, this Gaussian peak and uh, this experimental peak uh, you see here. Yeah. For low energy, uh, this uh, silicon and uh, high purity germanium detectors will have a barium window in this envelope, which is around uh, this sensitive volume of this detector. For high energies, uh, it is uh, the best is to use a high purity germanium detector with very large volume uh, and some aluminium. Uh, here uh, you have uh, this dead time or timing of this. Uh, as I said, uh, it is uh, about a few microseconds. That means this uh, semiconductor detectors, uh, it's not possible to uh, use for uh, very high count rates. Uh, uh, it's uh, possible only for uh, small intensities. Yeah? Here, uh, this is the same as was for the scintillation detectors. That means uh, you have here energy. Uh, here is resolution and how it is dependent this resolution of uh, KV uh, of uh, energy resolution uh, with energy, how it is different. And uh, it's uh, uh, why this for uh, silicon is better than germanium. It's clear because uh, you see that germanium have a much uh, lower uh, value of this energy which is needed for production of electron hole pairs. Yeah? And uh, now these uh, semiconductor detectors are very massively used and uh, they have, we have many commercial produced types and models of such uh, detectors. Yeah? On the end, uh, I will show you some uh, scheme of crystal diffraction spectrometers. Uh, if you remember, in this case, uh, we use this uh, Brack diffraction. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, Brack diffraction on crystal. And uh, that means that this crystal diffraction spectrometers uh, uh, consists of uh, crystal uh, lamina, quartz crystal, calcite, and detector of uh, X or gamma rays. It means, <clears throat> okay, you have source, you have uh, this crystal lattice, and you have detector. detector. Okay, uh, what is important for resolution? Uh, there are three important angles. One angle is uh, angle uh, of source visibility from crystal. That means it is how, uh, because, okay, the best will be if source, crystal, and detector will be point-like objects, but it is not possible to be. Yeah, uh, it will be not uh, such as here because uh, these distances are extremely, extremely uh, high and uh, here also that means it will be uh, <laughs> nearer to, to this point like uh, object, but it will be not. That means it is necessary uh, that uh, uh, it will be not all photons will have the same path from source uh, to uh, crystal and uh, for that means that it will be some uh, phase shift and uh, okay that uh, this uh, phase shift will be given by this angle of source visibility from crystal uh, second is angle of collimator visibility from source this is how we see from source uh, this, uh, this crystal. And uh, here, uh, this is angle of diffraction line uh, full with uh, 
the half maximum. Yeah, that means uh, this is this is given by this that this detector is not point-like. Here, this is given by this that source is not point-like, and uh, this is uh, given by this that this crystal is not point-like. Yeah, and all these three angles uh, will influence uh, resolution of uh, measurement to obtain. Uh, okay, here uh, you have this uh, Brack angle. That means this this is this angle of uh, scattering. Uh, okay, and this uh, angular uh, full width uh, in half maximum of intensity afterwards after the scattering. It is given because uh, we will expect that this is independent. Uh, quantities, that means uh, we will use a square and uh, we will expect that these angles are very, very small. Yeah, That means in this case, because uh, for calculation you see here you have tangents or uh, of sine and uh, but if you, uh, these angles are very small and uh, you have uh, these angles in radians, it's possible uh, to have the same uh, tangents of angle and uh, this angle in radians. Yeah? That's uh, okay, this is the reason why it is possible to, 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 to have uh, this, uh, this calculation of this, uh, of this uh, accuracy of this, uh, of this angle. Uh, okay, there are different uh, crystal geometries. It's possible to use plain crystal, carved crystal. It's also possible to use two crystals and two uh, diffractions. Yeah. Uh, this uh, resolution, relative resolution, uh, is given by uh, connection between uh, energy and uh, wavelength. You know that energy is uh, Planck constant time frequency. Frequency is possible uh, to calculate by a wavelength. Uh, and you also know that uh, if uh, energy is increasing, uh, wavelength is decreasing. This is the reason why here you, you have uh, this minus. If you will use this Bragg diffraction, uh, you will obtain that, uh, okay, this uh, ratio here uh, should be uh, given by uh, this ratio. And, uh, okay, uh, if uh, this uh, is constant and it is constant because uh, this is not uh, changed, yeah, uh, because we will, uh, okay, it is not changed in the situation in which we will not uh, change geometry of, of this experiment, but it, uh, by, uh, of this uh, spectrometer. Uh, and, uh, okay, that means uh, on the end uh, you will obtain uh, dependency of this uh, energy resolution on this uh, angular uh, resolution. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's uh, here. It is some example of uh, very accurate measurements, which was given by uh, this uh, crystal diffraction spectrometers. And uh, here, this accuracy is better than uh, tenth of uh, electron volts. That's extremely uh, accurate. Uh, measurements, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, in this case, this accuracy is uh, so nice uh, that uh, it's necessary uh, for calculation of uh, energy of this gamma uh, to include also reflection of this uh, nucleus uh, which is, which emits uh, this uh, photon. Yeah? That Again, as I said, during exercises, we will uh, calculate some examples and some exercises which are connected to, to, to these problems. Yeah? Okay, fine. Thank you very much for today.